Welcome back for part two of this transmitter site tour at Lookout Mountain in Denver, Colorado. Last week, we focused on the upstairs. This week, we're going to be focusing on the downstairs and a lot of the ancillary equipment. So without further ado. In the corner of this large basement is a control and rack room. Inside this room is equipment to receive the program video from the studio in town and to receive the satellite programming and send that down to the studio. This panel actually gives me an ancillary audio line coming back from the station that I can feed a second. We, have, we, care, we normally have one IFB radio channel. Uh-huh. So it just it broadcasts in the clear. And if we need to use it, we assign it to an up to a to a remote and do that. And we have the ability up here to make a second one that I can feed from the TV station off of an ancillary audio air off of air. Um, the playback decks. We have remote access back to servers from the television station, so we can play back clips off the, from the servers. We can edit up here, um, produce newscasts. So pretty much the hell down there, you can do it all up here. That's the idea. Uh, why are there red and blue lights on the wall? Oh yeah, I see those, yeah. Uh, and usually red is bad, why is it red? We have two transmission paths from the encoder, and they are separate from the encoder all the way up until they hit the transmitter. So we have a red path and a blue path, they are identical. If we need to work on something on the air path, we switch to the blue. If we're not sure about something, we build it on the blue path and test it. So is that also why you have ESCL 1 through the lamps there? That's kind of a cool idea. Yeah. I like that. It's awesome. So you can, you can look up instantly and know where we are, which path we're on, and if you're on the wrong one, you start asking questions. Because the, the transmitter software does have stuff in it that will switch over automatically in the event of failures. Uh, the red and the blue path go to both transmitters, the primary and the backup. So yeah, CBS is very, very, very big on backups. Yes. For two different states, going to two different satellites coming back to do different receive dishes down two different paths all the way back so here. So we have like New York and LA or something here, please? Is that what you're doing? New York and New York. New York and New York, they're both in New York. Well, okay. New York and New Jersey. New Jersey, okay. <coughs> it's, all, it's all New York, East Coast origination. Okay. Uh, but they uplink one from, I'm lying, I'm going to say one from Connecticut, one from New Jersey. Oh, okay. It changed a few years ago and I don't remember Paul knows. Yeah. But yeah, we are absolutely discreet all that way. Yeah. So we come back in, make the program, and send it back out the red and blue pass, so we're discreet again. There is also some capability to generate programming from the site in case of emergencies. We walk around the racks in the room and look at some of the STL, decoders, and other ancillary equipment. Wow, an old Gorman Redlick weather receiver. They had an engineer in a live truck down at the studio playing infomercials on a disc player, sending it up here to me, and I just put it right out of the air. Uh, nobody at home at 3 in the morning knew any different, uh, but it worked pretty well. Uh, and to have those backups anyway. You know, in this day and age with the internet, now we have fiber up here. Any place can be a control room or a studio. So it's kind of scary how that works. Around 2000, Cellular went from analog to digital. So, we're clogging the heart of your life. This is my channel bank. Okay. So, I bought this on eBay. It was from Sprint in New York State. And so, I came into it back in. So, it, it's a T1 channel bank. So, because we're in the microwave business, yeah. I can send the T1 to the studio and bring it back. It's, I mean, I have a spare one just for parts. These are long. Oh, really? Okay. This, yeah, these are old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can plug in my... I like to say I know a lot about yeah. the channel. Um, so yeah. I bring telephone up from the studio. Yeah. Yeah. And then I program this. So on my phone, I can pick it up and it'll ring in the control room downtown. Right, right. It's a ring down. And then I have some two-way radio audio coming up from oh, the okay. studio. Okay. Good. Still analog. It's... Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Probably not a lot of people are doing that. Yeah. I don't know how long analog will stay around in the phone yeah. business. Well, you know. um, the receivers are made by Ebert. Um, 
Last year, CBS upgraded the cards, the satellite receive cards. They're now compressing eight channels of programming onto one transponder. It used to be four, and now they've compressed it to eight. It's incredible. So on Football Sunday, they might be doing four regional games around the U.S. Yeah. They all come in on one transponder. And then I, well, they select which game I watch, which one we have here. It's just the technology on these things. You can see on the cards, they have fans, they have heat sinks in the back there. They have these enormous fans and heat sinks on the processors. Really? Yeah, because they're trying to decode uh, so much stuff. eight programs yeah. on one satellite transfer. Uh-huh. I mean, the computer power in these things is incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but CBS takes care of all this. They that used to be a room. Yeah. 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 Uh, so every TV station, all 200 affiliates, they have a CBS rack. Yeah. Our host talks about the construction of this large transmitter building and how it was a cooperation between several of the TV stations. Yeah, it will hire the ceiling to so our filters and that kind of stuff. So, that all came together. Plus, we were pooling our money. There were four states. Yeah, that's what made it work. Yeah. So, the thought was originally, well, we can't put HD side mount antennas on the old towers. We have to build new towers, new buildings. And you know, that would have been four new towers, four generators, four buildings. It just didn't make sense. So, very early on, the stations decided, well, what if we build one or not? Right, they're really nice together. Why yeah. not? Engineers, too, those guys, not so much. <laughs> One last look at the transmitter in the basement, and I noticed that the air conditioning ducting is massive. On our way out, we noticed some spare items on the shelves, including a really cool historical item. And then put their test equipment on here. Yeah. You know, I'm assigned like to the radio shack when they were around. Yeah. And he has to catch, you got the six inch uh, <laughs> line going in. These line sections are up to about 12 inches in diameter. The higher the power, the bigger the line. Then we're back outside and off to go back home. Thank you for joining me for this transmitter site tour at Lookout Mountain in Denver, Colorado. If you missed part one, go back and watch it because it was pretty cool. Now, I know some of you who watch this are responsible for transmitter sites, and I would love to take a tour of your transmitter sites. And I would love to talk about engineering with you and really cool things that you guys are doing at your sites and you know, just kind of highlight what you're doing. And if you're interested, let me know. Send me an email through my uh, this channel here on the About tab, and we will uh, be in touch and we'll see what we can get going. Anyways, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning.